flip this around. Yeah. Right. Fire it up light. All right, we're good. Welcome to Lunch with a Doc. We're having lunch today with one of my favorite docs, our young doc, David Allen Pag. He's uh, the newest doctor on, on board with us. And we're at one of my favorite places called Taco Loco. Now, Raya grew up basically in the Taco Loco ordering, what did you usually like to order when you were growing Case Probably beer. like bean and cheese burritos. Yeah, pretty much the regular. Just the standard, like vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Gonzalo Revelar is the owner here, proprietor. He started this place, I think, in the 80s, probably. I'm not sure. Maybe 88, maybe earlier. But um, it is the ultimate hangout. When this place gets really crowded, it's usually later night, because this is about the only place that you can actually get food late at night, except for um, Jack in the Box. So, the food is awesome. They have gluten free options. Um, it's really good. Why don't we go in, we're gonna order, and then we're gonna come back and have a good little lunch together, okay? Sweet. Now, this is complete with music, so it may be a little hard to hear, but you're gonna get the whole experience here. Yeah, nice. What do I think I'm gonna go with the Bass taco sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing the sea bass salad. It's a it's a winner. All right, there you are. I hear the burgers are really good. The chicken burgers and what other kind of burgers are really good? Dude, they got this tofu burger. Ooh, black and mahi mahi burger. Yeah, black and mahi mahi. What'd you get, G? I got a sea bass salad. And now it's your guys' turn. Right. What about coconuts? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah you gotta, go. have three <laughs> <laughs> gotta have that. They are. So, wow. Just chop the top off. Yeah, some nice yeah. fresh coconut. Yeah. Did you know that with coconuts, um, I heard that in the, in the war um, with Japan in the the tropics, if someone had supreme uh, significant blood loss, they would do transfusions with coconut water and save people's lives. Because it's similar to, to uh, plasma. Okay. Yeah, three. 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 Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Doug. Okay. So everybody's got their tie dyes on. Yes, sir. A couple Dude, <laughs> I'll get a blackened uh, mahi mahi burger. That sounds pretty good. Nice little roots in here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, you got a little sting on the radio, too? Yep. Yep. Uh, what kind of beer do you want? Give us a red hook. Yeah. Where you guys are sitting, you should have a drink with the beer. You have to be inside the wine bridge. So we're live at uh, Taco Loco today. Dr. G's got uh, Dr. Alapag with him today. He's going to be sharing a little bit about his story. He's one of our new doctors at Health and Balance. So we're going to be getting his story, hearing a little bit about him. We ordered some uh, Taco Loco burgers. We ordered a uh, sea bass we got all sorts of good stuff so they're just finishing up the payment but we have a good lunch with the doc good episode for you so stay tuned dr g's coming back so i'm gonna have you guys sit against the wall because it's better with the light
Boston, David? Yeah. You've never been here before? No, I've never been here. We never had a nice taco selection taco? of tacos and burgers and all kinds of yummy yeah. beverages. Look at all the blackened and... issues. Look at that. Everything's black and glory. Full season. Uh, Let's the good stuff, all right? Black and mahi What's your favorite Blackened. restaurant in Laguna besides Taco Loca? Um, I have to say La Serena is like right up there. Right yeah. next to the office. Good tacos. Yummy food. I'm also a big fan of Thai Brothers. Oh, I Eggplant love chicken, that. Thai Brothers, a little spicy. So Full good. on. So sit against the wall, yeah. Sit against the wall. Easier on the light. Down here, yeah. it's so awesome. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, having having a lot of time in San Clemente here. It's kind of right, the sister city. Yeah. yeah. So, I thought today, after we've shown you where there's a great place to get really good fresh fish meal, um, salads, burritos, tacos, you can get them on blue corn tortillas, incredible guacamole, salsas. Um, tofu burgers, um, they have a whole vegetarian um, you know, orientation as well for people. The fresh coconuts are so awesome, you'll see those soon. <laughs> I hear. But I, what we thought we would do is just introduce um, David to all of you. Um, many of you that come to the clinic probably already know David. He started working with us, what, six and a half years ago? And um, I thought what would be fun would be to hear a little bit about um, David, his interest in health, some about his upbringing, where he was raised, what kind of activities he's done, and get to know more, more about him and, and what kind of doctor he is, what kind of person he is. So David, tell us a little bit about you know, your family, where did they come from? And, yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, I'm just really excited to be here with you guys today and excited to be on board on team with uh, Dr. Gary and the staff at Health and Balance. And, um, such a unique opportunity to, to have been with them for two and a half years and then and go off to school and become a, become a chiropractor myself and uh, yeah just uh, you wanted to you were asking about um, upbringing yeah, and just kind of yeah tell, tell us about your childhood and your sure. parents and stuff yeah. so I actually grew up about an hour inland in a town called Laverne and um, was I played I grew up there playing soccer and played soccer for about 18 years and um, it was really great, and I didn't know that. Yeah, and you know, um, I was, and you know, my family's from Hawaii, and my parents were born and raised in Hawaii, but I grew up here, uh, and they always raised us to call Hawaii home and to, with the island culture. Um, just well, always raised us with the spirit of aloha and a strong connection to the islands, and um, so we always grew up calling Hawaii home, and grew up spending the summers there with aunties and uncles, and. And now being down here, having moved to San Clemente and being in Laguna Beach a little bit more, it's like there's no place closer than being in the islands than being here. I would agree. I mean, in terms of California, I think Laguna's got the most aloha vibe of any town that there is, especially with the water right now, 74, and great waves pumping all uh, summer long. I mean, it's been amazing. Yeah. We just were out having so much fun the other day and last Friday we went out together and and uh, oh, it felt like Hawaii it was so yeah. warm and nice <laughs> you're a local wherever you go <laughs> I tried to blend in <laughs> uh, much respect so David was on the first lunch with the doc that's right that's right, right. was yeah. that the first one you were on the first one. Oh, nice was that when we went over to uh, La Serena yeah that's right oh, yeah. Gonzalo <laughs> Cognado Gonzalo. Hey, you remember my friend David? Yes, no yeah, David. Yeah. So we yeah, are we're, we're, and there's Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for some love. So we're we are featuring your restaurant today. We have a Facebook Live oh, nice. TV show every every Wednesday at twelve thirty. We have lunch with a doc. And so we wanted to come and feature your place and just Thank give you. people the vibe and you know what what it's all about here and what great food you have and and what year did you start this place 87 87 i see i said 87 that's the same year we moved 
to Laguna from Santa Cruz. Awesome. Did you need to send that cruise? Yeah, Santa Cruz. Yeah, from 80 to 87. I met my wife at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Right after that, we went and moved to Santa Cruz. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I was telling people is that you really cater to the vegetarian um, culture and also to people that want really fresh, organic food, fish, and um, and, and then the coconuts have been incredible. Oh, you need some coconuts. You know, they're coming. They're coming. We already ordered them. We already ordered them. We already ordered them. Tell us what, what's the main thing that you really want to bring to the community. Well, the experience. It's the experience. Great. The casual experience. Yeah. You know, the one where you don't have to worry, you just get in your sandals, your shorts, and bring your dog, and I mean, you need You don't have to worry. Yeah. You have to dress that. No worries. It's a casual thing. And what are your hours here? You open at 11 every day, yeah. and Sunday to Thursday is 3 at night. Friday, Saturdays, two in the morning. Two in the morning. Two in the morning. Nice. Fridays and Saturdays, two in the morning. So wow. if you're ever out dancing, enjoying the nightlife, ready, this is where you want to come and That's eat right. and balance it all out, whatever you've been doing before that. <laughs> get a coconut. Get a coconut. Hydrate. Exactly. Yeah, so you don't get hungover. Exactly. Coconut. Nice. I was just telling them how in, during the war when there was people with blood loss, yes. they would give infusions with coconut, yeah, coconut water. Good. Now we're going to go in, this is our favorite part because they bring your food up and then they, they ask you what kind of salsas in guacamole, they're so generous with the servings, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to get in the other side. Alright. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super burger. We're all over the place today with lunch at the dock. We're not actually focused on anything. We're focused on our food. But we're going to be right with you. Thanks, Gonzalo. Did he just serve this thing up? I don't know what to do with it. Want me to hold it? I guess so. You got to put the straw in it and drink all that wonderful juice. Thank you, Gonzalo. Oh, you one guy. Hey, Gonzalo, can I do my can I do my tipping for you too? I'm gonna be here. Old school tip method. Mike, you gotta watch this. Mike, everybody gets to shoot one of these. Put those down, dude. Okay. Taking over the prize. So this is just 
kind of a fun game we started a long time ago. Yeah, I like that. If you make it, you get a free coconut or a beer or a, bottle, a glass of wine. Oh! oh. Alright. Oh, we get to try it. Yeah, yeah, it's like a carnival. Yeah, here we go. Oh! Okay, Ryan, let's see what you got. <laughs> let's a see what harsh. you got. Oh, this this thing. Thing. Should have got it for the underhand throw. Oh! oh. Alright, I got one more. One more. Last time, my last shot, I got it on the second throw. Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. There we go. Oh, right River. off the back of the thing. Ah. River. Hey, thank you guys. Right off the back of the glass. How much of a teaser? 119. Got it? Yep. Can you take it? Yeah, it was just What do you think about that experience? Oh, so amazing. All we need is one more, one more coconut. Oh, it's over there. Okay. There's two more over there. He gave us another oh, one for free, yeah. Oh, that was nice of him. It's all is the man. He's the man. And he cuts this little piece for you. Oh, yeah. What's up with these coconuts? Why are they so good? Well, they are fresh. I think he gets them, I think he gets them from the Philippines. Nicely done. Oh, the Philippines? Is, this is glory. I think he gets it from the Philippines. And they're super reasonable. I mean, this is, this is, in my opinion, this is the best deal in town. And what he does is after you get done, after you get done drinking the water, I forgot to get straws. I got straws. Okay. Then what he does is they scoop, they scoop all the meat out. And the meat is not like coconut meat you've usually had, which is hard. These are like baby coconuts, so it's super... It's almost like jello. Um, what would it be? The consistency when they're they're just yeah, jello. It's soft. It's kind of like jello. It's, oh it's man! Lovely. So salute to your health. Salute. Oh, that is so good. Isn't that oh, unreal? Oh, that man. is incredible. I just like I can't even believe it. It's oh like, my gosh! After like a hot day at the beach or just. I can't believe how that's anything. naturally a crank, but later. Oh my gosh. I think when, so good. the next time we serve, your family's not coming down today, are they? For no. The Wednesday thing? No. Okay. Um, you need to get back soon, too. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the, the World Cup is on tonight. I the know. The Gold Cup. You're going to go home and watch it. You're going to watch the finals? And yeah. But you're right. I, I would like to actually hmm. plan ahead, buy some of these, have them cracked, transport them in my Yeti, somehow figure it out so that they don't tip over and, and spill the juice out and actually drink these on the beach. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why not? Well, I just appreciate it so much. I don't know if, if any of you guys are familiar with actually getting the coconut off the tree and it has like about that thick of, of, yeah. of skin around it. And it's almost impossible to get off. They have like a special tool that they just cr crush the thing on to get the green stuff off. And then you gotta open up the coconut too. So to not have to do all that work and get to enjoy the the yumminess of the of the juice, ice cold, so it's amazing. Good. It is so it's good. incredible. So this is oh. definitely gonna be one of your what stops. Consider making this one of your stops this summer because it is uh, it's such an experience. You already got to meet Gonzalo. Now, let's get back to your story. Sure. Um, so you you spent the summers in Hawaii, uh -huh. and then you were playing soccer. And so soccer and surfing were your main things. Yep. So you did. Yep. Soccer, surfing, and then my my all my both sides of my family. Everyone plays music. So just growing up, you kind of naturally family gatherings, family parties. You pick up the ukulele. Uh -huh. and so slowly, slowly, sorry, it was kind of it was sports. It was surfing. It was playing music and just lucky to grow up with that culture and with all those traditions. And, and didn't your mom? Didn't your mom start really early too? Wasn't she like? Didn't she start playing ukulele? And your dad too? Both of them just yeah. as little kids, right? Yeah, as little kids because both of my grandparents on both sides were musicians, and so you can you just can't help but pick up some type of instrument um, being around our family. So it's kind of just part of part of growing up playing ukulele down at the beach and yeah. dancing hula and 
that's a lot so of fun. So where, where would you usually go? Where were your aunties and uncles and what? Oahu, mainly. Mm -hmm. And then... What part of Oahu? Um, kind of the, the center of Oahu, uh, called Mililani, and then also... what Is am I up country? It's right in the middle, so it is a little bit higher elevation, but one of my favorite places to grow up going was uh, Paliva Beach, North Shore. Oh, really? Yeah. All the North Shore was just, yeah. just a magical place growing up. Wow. I just love to go to and still love to go there. And so your, your dad surfs? Yeah, my dad surfs, stand-up paddles. Actually, oddly enough, my dad didn't surf growing up in Hawaii. He never surfed. Oh, he didn't? And it wasn't until I was a kid and wanted to start learning how to surf. We actually learned how to surf together, which was really cool. Wow. And till this day, just enjoy getting a session with my dad, and it's so special. Yeah. He was also a patient in health and yep. yep, both of my parents were, and just, it was really awesome. Now they've they've um, retired yep. and built a house on the big island. Uh, on the big island, yeah, they split their time, they go back and forth. You know, two months there, two months here. It's pretty nice. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. So they, they built their house in a town called? In a town called Kalapana on the big island. Um, lots of coconuts there, lots of really good yummy things there, tons of fish. It's, a, it's an amazing place. And yeah. some of us that are, you know, older remember the Hawaiian group Kalapana, which had some great songs and super happy vibe to their music. And so that's where they are. So, so then tell us a little bit more about your soccer. You, didn't you, um, you, you played a lot in high school and was it clubs and stuff yep. too? So I played, so I started off, you know, my my mom coached my sister as a kid, so I would grew up, even before I was four and five years old, I was already on the soccer field. So naturally, by the time I became five years old and started playing on my own, I was just kind of hooked from there. And pretty much played pretty hardcore all the way until through high school and played for a club in San Bernardino and the inland, you know, the inland clubs. And we competed in the, um, the Coastal Premier League, so we played all the teams down here, all the really good teams, and um, pretty much everyone on my team, all the starters were offered scholarships, and we all kind of went off to play in college as well. So you got a scholarship? Yeah, so I played, I ended up getting to play in college, college soccer at uh, Azusa Pacific um, University, so a small Christian college up near Pasadena. Um, got to play all four years there, started and ended up as captain my senior year, so mm -hmm. you know what? it was kind of a fun trivia fact. <laughs> <laughs> now, another trivia fact is, you had a nickname that was based on something. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> so, um, every, you know, if you're lucky enough to see a picture of me, there was, um, I had long hair all through middle school. I grew my hair from 6th grade until 8th grade, and so I had a ponytail that was about this long, and by the time I ended up seventh and eighth grade it kind of became my trademark on the soccer field and they my ponytail would be flying and I'd be going all over the place and they ended up uh, giving me the name the flying Hawaiian <laughs> so and I could see that that name kind of stuck uh, after I cut my hair um, it was still for the flying Hawaiian <laughs> when are you bringing it maybe Ryan can get me on a skimboard or something like that and <laughs> try to do it again I think I might let the hair grow again. 122 is very important, number 122. I don't know. You never know. You never know. So what about your journey through like health and how you came to like want to be involved yeah. in health medicine, sports rehabilitation, sure. becoming a chiropractor? Like yeah. how did you really kind of get excited about working with patients and helping them kind of reach their health goals? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I became very interested in, I knew from the very, I knew from a very young age, you know, you know, before I was 10 years old that I wanted to do something as a career to help people. And in middle school, I, I had a couple of pretty gnarly soccer injuries that just wouldn't go away and I ended up in physical therapy. So being in physical therapy for like three or four months as a, as a young teenager, um, I kind of started to see, wow, these people actually like help people, they help people stay active. I was like, I think I want to do something along these lines. And so from then on, I always knew I wanted to be in the health field. I always knew I wanted to work with uh, athletic people, athletes, and so when I was went to ended up going to college, I studied athletic training and sports medicine. Okay. And so, it, again, I got to work in the health field. I got to help people f recover from injuries. I got to keep athletes on the field, and that, that was something that was really gratifying for me and something yeah. that I really enjoyed. 
Um, so I worked in sports medicine for about five or six years after I graduated. Oh wow! Um, working with I worked at uh, Dana Hills High School, really? San Clemente High School. Worked with those athletes, and um, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So fast forward a, a few more years, realizing that hey, I really enjoy the clinical setting. I enjoy working with patients. There's something that's really satisfying about coming alongside of people, um, not only when they're hurt, but elevating their health to the next level, Yeah. Um, I decided, hey, I think I, I, I need to go back to school. And so I, I started to take classes and prerequisites to go to PA school and um, was kind of on that track. And during that time, I ended up working part-time at Health and Balance. Imagine that. Um, sometimes, I always say, sometimes it's amazing how Craigslist can change your life. Because <laughs> I came across a a Craigslist ad for a, a, a health clinic in Laguna Beach and kind of jumped on it and wow. um, I think you know God kind of brought my path onto Dr. Gary's path and we kind of you know had a very special relationship from the very beginning. Um, oddly enough I was pretty resistant to going to chiropractic school for about two years <laughs> and you know just seeing what Dr. Gary does and what the whole staff does at Health and Balance I just I just really um, Realized that that was the course that I wanted to take, so I ended up going to chiropractic. They do school. it all over there. Oh, over there. Yeah. yeah. So fast forward another two years, two and a half years. Um, so I worked at Health and Balance for two and a half years, and then he was in the therapy department and working on people day in, day out, and showing them exercises, helping them get get to where they're wanting to go a lot faster by getting good care that's that's specific to their problem and helping them to really get closer to what they want to experience in their life, whether it's, you know, activities in, you know, with sports or hiking or dancing or surfing, volleyball, whatever it may be, it's all about that and helping people get what they want. And if we, if we can do that, then we know we're, we're helping people and, and it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Woo! That medium salsa is spicy. You got a spicy one there? Yeah. <laughs> But it's tasty and it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mouth is burning. <laughs> Coconut. Coconut, put out the fire. Coconut extinguisher. Yeah. So it's been an amazing, amazing journey and just happy to be back on the team and graduated chiropractic school and get to come back as a doctor and wow. be part of this wonderful, amazing community. Yeah. What, what did I tell you before? before you went off the chiropractic show? Well, Dr. Gary said, you always have an open door here, and if you want to have a job after you graduate, I'm here for you. And so I graduated and gave him a call, and he just accepted me with open arms, and super excited to bring me onto the team, and and it's been really great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's been really special. Isn't that awesome to hear that story? One of the other things that's so so enjoyable about getting to know David and his family is that when we've done um, our open houses, the Alpeg family has played, they, they even let me sing with them now and then, which is really an honor for me. Yeah. And um, and then when we've done, they played at our church, they've done uh, worship stuff together. You can always count on the Aloha vibe and, and feel good, happy music. And uh, you should hear his, his mom and dad sing, they're just amazing. Mom just got this angelic Hawaiian voice. Dad's always in there with a harmony, or he can carry the front, you know, the front man himself. David does solo gigs. He's played down at Crystal Cove and a bunch of different sushi restaurants. And I mean, he's a he's a you know one man show himself as well. So if you ever need someone on a weekend or for a party, then call Health and Balance and get in touch with David. <laughs> he's the guy. Yeah. It's if you want the Aloha vibe. Yeah, we played. I've had to do, you know, like weddings, birthday parties, and all kinds of events. And uh, playing music was kind of a way to not only have fun while I was in school, but kind of keep the family alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make a little money. Yeah. So he's, David has a wonderful wife, Alexa. Alexa, hopefully you're watching right now. Well, actually, you probably aren't because you didn't even know we were going to pull David into the TV show today. Was, She'll catch it. She'll catch the replay. Yeah, <laughs> catch the replay. And then uh, two daughters. Mm -hmm. Tell them about that. So I have a daughter. I have two daughters. Keisha is four and a half, 
and Leanna is two and a half. Keisha was one a year old when I went off to chiropractic school. And then within the first year, Leanna came along and so we navigated, Alexa and I navigated going through a pretty intense program, you know, having another kid and taking care of the kids. And um, it actually kind of shaped what direction I kind of saw myself going within chiropractic and kind of opened my, my, my scope, so to speak, to working with kids and pediatric chiropractics and pregnancy chiropractic. And so Did you do um, some training in Yeah, so I took a lot of courses outside of school to get specialty training with the ICPA, the um, Pediatric Association for Chiropractic, and also um, working with pregnancy and newborns. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's, that's neat because as doctors, you know, unless you're just a GP, you usually have certain areas that you of focus and interest that you have. So, so that that I didn't actually know until now. I'm glad we found that out, so we can make sure we funnel those patients to you. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about what you're really interested in moving forward with in terms of what you want to bring to the community and yep. um, in terms of what you offer. One of the things I think that I'm passionate about and kind of drew me into the chiropractic field in general is that we get to come alongside of people and not only address what their symptoms are, but get to the root of their problems, or not their problems, but the root of the issues that are causing them to not enjoy their life as much as they would like to. And so that's why I would really, that's kind of my, my main goal, my passion, my purpose is to come alongside of people and help them on the process of enjoying their life to the fullest. Uh, whether that's surfing more, or enjoying traveling, or even just something as simple as playing with the grandkids. And um, on top of that, just seeing you know how difficult and how challenging it is um, for, for parents and young parents, especially moms taking care of babies and, is, uh, and taking care of kids, it's a, a very challenging thing that I see my wife go through. And you know, as with chiropractic and rehab and exercises and yoga and all those variety of nutrition and all those things to help take all those components and help families thrive and families be successful and, and um, help the whole family whether it's uh, the child who's you know an infant or parents all the way up to, to grandparents just live a life of, um, of thriving and fullness yes yeah. do your kids get treated they do yeah so my kids you know they they get adjusted, you know, I'd say on a monthly basis, or they get treatment or if they're sick, then we'll treat them, I'll take care of them, you know, a couple times a week, even though if they're really kind of struggling, then we'll, we'll do more if we need to. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining in. See, do you see my son's burger right there? What I'd like to do at this point, is give me this. <laughs> give me that. Give me that. Come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Mind your papa. I want, I want them to be able to see you eat your first bite. I don't want to show them me eating my food. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's when I get off the camera and enjoy it without right. being I'm paranoid about it. Kind of like a, a Carl's Jr. Um, ad. <laughs> ad. This could be a Taco Loco ad with one of their youngest. I mean, you were born just after they started. <laughs> That's why I came outside and talked about it while you guys were ordering. Yeah. Nice. Yep. All right. So I don't know if you got to see the the huge chunk of avocado in there. Mm -hmm. That is so amazing. The sea bass salad is just divine. And look at these Let's coconuts. See, see. Oh, yeah. What's inside the burger? Yeah, what's yeah, inside mahi, there? Mahi. What'd you get? Black in yeah, something? Mahi mahi. Mahi mahi. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well. Oh, nice. Here, so, maybe I should just see how it. You could film me taking a bite of your burger. Yeah, go ahead. Your stomach would explode because of the gluten. <laughs> and you're really going to opt out of letting me just get one little shot? It would be a great way to end the show. I mean, you're kind of freed up. I'm fully freed up. Come on. Let me try. Oh tell me. Tell me. There you go. <laughs> All right. This is Raya enjoying. Wait, let me get it from the, the angle here. The angle? Oh, oh, oh. This is oh. the black and mahi mahi burger. Raya, Raya. <laughs> Victory is mine. All right. Well, we're signing off.
Well, thanks. See you for, next time, next Wednesday. Thanks for letting me join you guys. Yeah, See you around. All right. Woo.